how do we improve education, elementary, middle, and high schools in District 5? What are the main challenges, in your opinion? Yeah, the, well, um, there's a number of challenges. Um, you know, I'd say, and before, you know, I, I, I'll preface it with uh, the fact that the council, you know, does not set education policy. That's, you know, that's really the uh, the Board of Education. Um, and so, um, you know, the council can really deliver the resources that I showed there on that on that first graph um, to make sure that the schools are well funded um, and have the resources they need to create the programs and initiatives um, to, to teach our students. Um, but the, again, the council doesn't set education policy. Um, in terms of what the council can do, um, you know, the council, uh, um, you know, school facility conditions are an issue uh, all over District Five and all over the all over the county. There's a lot of overcrowding. Um, there's a lot of schools with, um, you know, uh, uh, other building needs such as uh, HVAC systems that don't work. So it's too hot in the summer and it's too cold in the winter. Um, that's really distracting for our students. Um, you know, there's schools like Burtonsville Elementary and Greencastle Elementary where my children went, where uh, the cafeterias are too small. Uh, and so you're having five uh, and six lunch periods, you know, starting as early as, you know, 9.30 a.m. and ending as late as 2 p.m. You know, and that's that has an impact on our children, too. I mean, if you if you eat breakfast at 830 and then you got to go eat lunch at 10 o'clock, you know, one, you know, the student might not even be hungry. Uh, but two, they're going to get hungry later on in the day. Um, and same thing where, you know, if you eat breakfast at 830 and your lunch is until 130, you know, that's that's difficult for some of our, you know, particularly our younger children. Um, so those are some of the issues that the, that the county uh, that the council can address. Um, because it's it's around our capital budget and our capital needs. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's about making sure that, um, you know, the schools are the schools are funded, funded, um, that the money is being spent uh, wisely. Uh, the other thing I've been I've been interested in and I worked on uh, when I was in Council Member Hucker's office uh, is around mental health. Um, our, a lot of our students are uh, struggling right now. Uh, you've seen an increase in incidents in our schools in terms of public safety um, and, and students acting out. Um, I think part of that has to do with some of the mental health struggles that they're facing. Um, and so, you know, it's it's something that I, you know, three years ago before I left Councilmember Hucker's office, we worked on a supplemental appropriation to hire more uh, mental health workers uh, and mental health counselors for our schools. Uh, and it took two years, two years to get that passed because um, you know, unfortunately, the executive branch and, um, you know, parts of the MCPS administration were um, not opposed, but they had concerns. Um, and so it took a couple of years to get it passed. It finally got passed last year. Um, so there's supposed to be 50 new mental health uh, workers and social workers um, in our schools. Um, and only I think something like seven have been hired. So we're, we're really far behind on meeting our children's uh, needs. Uh, not just from an education standpoint, but from a, um, you know, from a mental health standpoint, from a crisis standpoint. Uh, and these are all things that affect their, their, their education. So, 